you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Man, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. Please don't let nothing um, hinder your celebration today, okay? We have a, a Lord that went to the cross and died for us. And guess what? He prophesied and said that he will be raised on the third day. Hallelujah. And he now sits at the right hand of the Father. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God, for we have hope. Amen. I'm telling you, like I always tell people that this day or the celebration of Easter isn't a one-day celebration. Hallelujah. But it's a lifelong celebration. Praise the Lord. It is a symbolism. It is the epitome of our faith. It is the foundation of what we believe. Apostle Paul said that if Jesus did not raise from the dead, then our faith is in vain, right? And we are to be pitied. <laughs> But glory be to God that he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Um, welcome to Sunday School um, Oasis Christian Fellowship International Sunday School. Um, please, if you're tuning in, we will be having service um, from the head pastor, uh, Pastor Isaac, um, at 11 a.m. So please don't go anywhere. All right. Um, I'm just a warm up. <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Um, I want us to. Go to John chapter 20, John chapter 20, verse 17, and we're going to read John chapter 20, verse 17. Hallelujah. Well, let's start with, um, let's start with 15. So Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? He's talking to Mary, right? She saw him, um, or she, 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 he saw her um, weeping outside the, of the tomb, right? And he said, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. <laughs> Verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to stop there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I pray that all those who are listening, God, that they may be edified this morning. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you may use my tongue, um, that you may give me utterance to speak the truth um, and to speak um, everything according to your will, God. Lord, I thank you so much for your word, God. Quicken me, quicken the word, God, that um, I may speak with power and boldness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want us to go back, all right? So imagine Mary is outside the tomb, right? She's crying um, because... Three days ago, she just saw her, her Lord, her master, her teacher, her friend crucified, right? So you can imagine the kind of, um, the, the, the kind of unbelief she was in at the time. However, Jesus said to tell her, go and tell my brethren that I have ascended, right? Go and tell them, or go and tell them that I ascend unto my father. And I want you to notice that Jesus said, don't touch me. Right. Don't touch me. Why? We'll get to that soon. Moving forward in verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples all that the Lord has spoken unto her. Right. And then in verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. Hallelujah. And when he had so said, he showed him unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father had sent me, even so send I. I or even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whomsoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. I want to jump forward. Now, but Thomas, Thomas was a part of the twelve, right? And the Bible says that he was not around, right? When Jesus visited the disciples. 
So, it says the other disciples there, so they, we have seen the Lord. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. <laughs> I will not believe. Hallelujah. And then it says, and after eight days again, his disciples were in, were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said unto Thomas, Reach hither your finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither my, thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Hallelujah. So in John 20, for those of us who have tuned in, I want to show you that there was a time lapse right of jesus g Je or, or mary mary's encounter with jesus and then thomas's encounter the first encounter jesus is saying don't touch me right and then now he's telling thomas you can touch me now because something happened hallelujah and if you see if you remember back when he was talking to mary he said that i have not ascended unto my father hallelujah Praise the Lord. My question is, what did he exactly go to do? He said he hadn't ascended to his father yet. So that means that he had something that needed to be done before he came back to earth. Hallelujah. To see and, and to, to fellowship with his disciples. Now I want to give you a background. The background, why is, this, why is this event and this resurrection so important to our faith? It is important because the Bible is clear that every soul that sinned shall die. So... The Bible says that the righteousness of God was displayed as Jesus took the price of sin, right? So that every soul that sinneth must die. So Jesus was made a propitiation and the atonement was made, the shedding of his blood, right? The, the, the death of, of our Lord was made for us to be redeemed from the penalty that we deserved. Hallelujah. Isn't that the mercy of God? Isn't that a blessing? That God spared us and he lay, and Jesus laid down his life for us. Now, back in the time of the Old Testament, right, there was something called a high priest. A high priest was the person who was designated to go into the holiest of holies, right, to make an atonement for himself and the people. Now, the high priest had to come into this holiest of holies, right? He had to come with two things. Number one, number one, a sacrifice had to be made. A sacrifice had to be made for the people, right? So a lamb was either slain or a goat was slain, right? Henceforth, the lamb of God, which is Christ Jesus. Um, right? That's why he's called the lamb of God. He's the sacrificial lamb for the world. Now, the second thing is the blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood is so important because the Bible says without the blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no forgiveness. If Jesus went to the cross and there was no blood, our salvation will be imperfect. Our salvation will be partial. But glory be to God that the blood was shed for you and I. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. Check this out. It says, But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Right? Like I just mentioned earlier. The Holy Ghost, this signi signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was standing. Praise God, which verse nine was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that this earth that we saw that we're seeing the earth and the tabernacle that the Levites and the, um, the people in the Old Testament that the, the tabernacle they assembled, it was a it was a um, a replica of heaven. It was a replica of heaven. Right. Like, like we know that earth was made in, 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 in the, the image of heaven, but it is it is a 
I wouldn't say is a faulty, but I mean because of the fall, right? We know that that it is it is not the 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 most perfect tabernacle, right? So I want us to read. Look in verse. Look at verse. Um, uh, we're gonna jump verse thirteen. Oh, verse twelve. I'm sorry. Oh, 11, 11, verse 11, it says, but Christ, right, become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Hallelujah. That's exactly what I was just saying. That the tabernacle, right, that Christ was going into, right, when he said that I had not ascended to my father, it was the tabernacle in heaven. Glory be to God. It was the tabernacle in heaven. Like I said, what we see on earth and what we're doing on earth is just a foreshadow of the most perfect will in heaven. Hallelujah. So we said this tabernacle wasn't made with hands, right? It wasn't made with hands, but it was made by God himself. And then it says in verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the Holy place, oh, the most holiest place, having obtained eternal redemption. Hallelujah. Write this down. Number one, what did Jesus do when he ascended to the Father? He entered into the most holiest place. Hallelujah. That's why we can call him a high priest, right? He entered into the most holiest place. Number two, write this down. He presented his blood in the presence of the Father. I want us to go to verse 24. Look at verse 24. It says, For Christ is not entered into the holiest into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Glory be to God. I want you to understand that your redemption was purchased by the blood that Christ presented to the Father. So he went to heaven and he said, Father, I'm here. I'm here to present my blood on behalf of the world. I'm here to present my blood on behalf of Oasis. I'm here to present my blood on behalf of the churches of, 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 of America. That is what happened. I, I want you to picture it and visualize that the things that we did in the earth, that Jesus did it in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Number three, write this down. He secured eternal redemption. Hallelujah. He secured it. That means that there is no, there, there is no uh, redemption and then he says he changes his mind. No, he secured it forever. Hallelujah. God cannot turn back his mind. God cannot change his mind. Oh, glory be to God. That, I, I want you to think about that. That God cannot change his mind. That the, the redemption that was secured is final. Praise God. Until he comes back for the prized possession. Right? That's what, that's what the Bible tells us in Ephesians. Until he comes back for the prized possession. Right now we are in a time of grace. Lord, oh, glory be to God. Right now the, the blood is available. Praise God. I want you to understand something. That what we have in Christ right now. What Jesus did. As, as, our, as we were paid with a price. As we were bought with a price. He brought us into fellowship with with God. He brought us into fellowship. We're going through a time of havoc, a time of chaos, a time of, of tri tribulation. And I'm here to tell somebody that God has restored us into fellowship with the Father. He has restored us. The Bible says the ministry we have is a ministry of reconciliation, that God is no longer holding our sins against us. Glory be to God. I want you to turn with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Amen. The take home today. I want you to know. Verse 13 it says. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise the Lord. We're talking about adoption. Right now, once we were enemies with God, once we were at enmity with God, once we were rivals with God, but because of the blood that was shed, look at this in verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Without the blood, there is no redemption. Without the blood, there is no prayer life. Hallelujah. Without the blood, there is no righteousness. Without the blood, there is no confidence for us to approach God and to have confidence that he hears our prayers. 
Hallelujah. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to know that you have been born, you have been bought with a price. You have been born of God. And I want to read verse 20. It says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Hallelujah. I want you to tell yourself that I am blameless. I want you to tell yourself that I am the righteousness of God. I want you to tell yourself and remind yourself that I have been reconciled with God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am in good standing with God. Not by my own righteousness, but by the blood that was shed for me. By the blood that was shed and brought me back into good standing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. I want to pray for somebody. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the blood that was shed, God. I thank you, God, that Jesus ascended to heaven. On behalf of us, on behalf of the world, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you have brought us into fellowship with with the Father. And I pray for anybody that is struggling with their faith right now, for anybody that is stumbling. I pray, God, that you may send comfort, Holy Spirit, that you may comfort them in this time, and you may remind them, Holy Spirit, remind them of the words of Christ that you have brought them into fellowship with the dear Son Jesus, as you have brought them into fellowship with the Father. That you have brought them into fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That we are blameless. That they are blameless before, before the, 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 accu the accuser of the brethren. Lord, I thank you for this meeting. I thank you for this day. As we remember that you have been risen. Hallelujah. And you sit at the right hand of the Father interceding for the saints. Lord, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.